Hey, everyone. Okay, I have a couple of quick announcements. You don't want to miss these. I'm very excited about them, and I hope you will be as well. Through the months of September and October, I'm going to be doing bonus podcast episodes on Tuesdays and Thursdays. These episodes will be shorter in duration, just about 15 minutes than the typical show. So if you get, if you're someone who gets notifications, whenever a new episode of the Suzanne Banker show has been uploaded, you're now going to get three notifications instead of one. So I'll pop up on your phone a couple of times a week. And hopefully that's a good thing because the point is to um, not bug you, but to give you much needed inspiration. So that's one thing. And then also we'll see how that goes. And if that if that continues to go really well, we'll continue that beyond October. But for now, I've just committed to September and October, mostly to cover so much of the content in my new book, How to Get Hitched and Stay Hitched, because there's just way more in there than meets the eye just from the title. So that's part, part of the reason why I'm going to be doing this. Okay. Also, I will be speaking live. I know post-COVID, it's so amazing to get out into the world. I will be speaking live in Orlando, Florida on October 23rd at the 22 convention, which was founded by Anthony Johnson, an American entrepreneur whose mission is to abolish feminism and get this, make women great again. (laughs) Needless to say, that title um, perked my interest. And you'll you'll see why when you take a look at at, at what this is all about, why, why we're definitely a match. Let's put it that way. It is time to reject once and for all, the toxic feminist dogma that undermines your ability to love and understand men and to build strong families. I would love to meet and talk with any one of my readers or listeners or followers or clients in Orlando. And the best part is fans of Suzanne Venker get a 25% off discount by using the code VENK25. That's V-E-N-K-25. V-E-N-K-25 when you go to check out. This is again on October 23rd. Of course, the, um, the, the um, conference itself goes on longer than one day, but that's when I'll be speaking. My podcast producer, Kelsey, and I will be there selling books, chatting it up, and having an all-around blast. So we hope to see you all there. And yes, it will be this speaking, um, the speech, if you want to call it that, the talk, will be available later via the internet. But there is nothing better than a live event. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready to get out in the world and chat with people and get out from behind my computer. And I hope you guys are too. So that website is 22, the number 22, convention.com. 22, convention.com. Take a look through the whole thing. Um, There'll be more information coming up about this as we go along here about what I'm talking about. I'm just honed in on my talk, not... The, the convention itself. So, um, yeah, just, just know that when you go to sign up for it and you get to the end page, you put in that code V E N K V E N K 25 and you'll get 25% off. Okay. And now on with the show. From the magnificent Midwest, it's the Suzanne Venker Show, where men and women are equal in value but wildly different by nature. Join us here every week when we challenge the culture's hugely flawed narratives about men, women, sex, and love. From coast to coast and from around the world, thank you for joining us. So I got wind the other day of a new song on a new album from a singer named Casey Musgraves. The song on this single, new single, or no, sorry, this single on this new album, I don't even know, is that what you call it? A single, right, a single on an album, is called Breadwinner. So of course, it captured my attention. How could that not? And I did some homework, did some research on it, and was preparing to come on to talk to you all about it. And then lo and behold, a couple days later, I there's an article about the song in a publication called the Lily, which I'd never heard before. So I did some homework on that and it turns out the Lily open or started in 2017 and it's a product of the Washington post, which tells you a lot right there. And it's dedicated to quote stories that are central to the everyday lives of millennial women. And the staff is all female. 
So that gives you some good context for where this article came from. But quite honestly, that's really not all that different from most publications these days. Okay. The title is Casey Musgraves breadwinner resonated for women who out earn their partners. I don't know why they can't just say husbands. I mean, I do know why, but damn it. It's just husband, husband and wife. Because that's what we're talking about. We're talking about women, wives out earning husbands. So just call it what it is. Anyway. Okay. So the opening is, um, the song describes a partner's look, the song describes the ex-husband of this, of this Casey Musgrave, his initial quote unquote acceptance of Musgrave's success. And then the downfall and pain that occurs when he doesn't realize what a relationship with a bread woman, with a breadwinning woman entails. Now notice very carefully, all the blame is on the man, right? There's absolutely nothing here but victim and perpetrator. The downfall and the pain that occurs when he doesn't realize what a relationship with a breadwinning woman entails. The lyrics, some of the lyrics are as follows. He wants a breadwinner. He wants your dinner until he ain't hungry anymore. He wants your shimmer to make him feel bigger until he starts feeling insecure. He wants a breadwinner. He wants your dinner until he ain't hungry anymore. He wants your shimmer. Well, I would argue that your shimmer was never making him feel bigger, and that's not what happened at all. But basically what they're arguing, and they give some other examples, which I'll read to you, of other women in the same boat. They get together with men who appear to be happy with their success. This is how they've described it. And then only after marrying and having, well, after marrying, let's say, some have kids, some don't, um, does it, do they realize that all of a sudden it's not working? And to be fair, I would argue that both, I, I, I wouldn't argue that men don't realize, I mean, I would agree that men don't realize how dramatically that dynamic is going to, how, how differently it's going to feel after kids come or after you're married than before. On the other hand, you could say the same thing about the women, because of course the assumption going in is that men and women are the same. They're equal. They're equal as in the same. They're interchangeable. So there's no recognition that what you're doing when you're dating is going to feel very different once you're married. Okay. Um, he, let's see. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, 30% of women in heterosexual dual income marriages make more than their spouses. This is a rapidly growing number. Only 13% of women made the same or more than their husbands in 1980. Okay. That's undeniably true. Um, it, it, and it is absolutely growing. There's no question about that. It's not going to go in the other direction. We now know, I don't know if you guys heard that the gap between men and women on college campuses or getting degrees rather has grown substantially. That came out about two weeks ago. It's now, um, uh, roughly basically 40 men, 40% men, 60% women getting college degrees. So it is absolutely indisputable that this is the wave of the future. This is where we're headed. And if you as a listener didn't experience this in your own life or your own relationship, you can bet your kids will. So it is going to affect you eventually one way or the other. Plus the majority of the client, my coaching clients are in this boat. I'd say about 60% of them are, 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 are where the women are out earning the men. And so lo and behold, that's why they're calling me. For many Musgraves fans, the lyrics in Breadwinner are relatable. And then they use two other women as examples. Trisha Spurgeon, 55. Um, she and her high school sweetheart divorced. And their biggest issue, she said, quote, was that I made more money than him, end quote. And interestingly enough, I was, my husband and I were out um, at a friend's house at their lake recently and they invited another couple who we hadn't met before. And she was married. She had been married to the husband um, for about just seven years or so. And she's in her fifties. So she, and anyway, she's divorced. And she said that her first marriage just, she just came out and said, it's never going to work when the woman makes more than the man. So I thought, just thought that was interesting because I feel like I'm being walloped with this message everywhere I go these days. 
Research suggests that when women do out earn their husbands, neither of them likes to admit it. That's true. There was an article, I mean, there was a research a couple years ago pointing out that very thing. They did a huge story about that in the New York Times, that it's not just a matter of men feeling insecure. Women don't like it either. They don't like it either. And that's because of hypergamy. And we know this, right? The people who listen to this understand that we've talked about this. Women like men who are on their equal level or higher socioeconomic, as far as socioeconomics are concerned. That's called hypergamy. It's just as real today as it has always been. There are good evolutionary reasons for that. And no one wants to talk about it. It's just point the fingers at the men. They're insecure. But we're going to get into the details as to actually what that really looks like when women are the breadwinner and how it's equal in terms of the ill effects of it for most people. Not all, but most. Um, okay, so then the, the article says, after pointing to that research that neither of them likes to admit it, pointing to, quote, persistent gender stereotypes about who should make more money in heterosexual relationships. This is a silent relationship killer, which is our gender expectations of one another, says for Farnoosh Torabi, who wrote a book several years back, which I wrote a blog about at the time, called When She Makes More. Okay. So again, the narrative is woman makes more than the man. Man can't handle it. And the reason for all of this is because of gender stereotypes. That's it. That's the narrative. Now, we're going to blow that to smithereens because that's a bunch of crap and talk about the real reasons as to why it doesn't work because it is not gendered expectations, which is not to say that that doesn't exist at all. It just means that to, the, to whatever extent it does exist, it will not override male and female nature. And it's not as big of a deal as uh, male and female nature because mother nature is always going to beat out anything that we do in society. If you're going to go to war with her, she's going to win. Um, in Breadwinner, she sings, I wish somebody would have told me the truth. Isn't that interesting? This is, yeah, this is more of the lyrics. I wish somebody would have told me the truth. See, he's never going to know what to do with a woman like you. I wish somebody would have told me the truth. See, he's never going to know what to do. That's true. So let's start there. Why is that? What is the truth? Why doesn't he know what to do with a woman like you? And what is the truth? Because men and women are not interchangeable. They are not equal as in the same. They come to the marriage relationship with totally different expectations and desires and needs. A man's ability to earn is absolutely 100% inextricable from his identity. If he is unable to earn, or if he does not earn to the level that he wishes to or feels that he can, he is going to suffer as an individual, as a husband, whose primary instinct is to provide and protect for his family. That's a fact. A wife and a mother is not working for the same reasons if she is employed, which most are to some degree anyway, is not working for the same reasons that the man is. She does not want to provide for her husband. That's not why she's doing it. She's either doing it because she, she and or they made poor decisions, financial decisions that is, early on that got them into a pickle to where they now need two incomes. So they're thrust into it or she's thrust into it with him or they don't need the money and she does it simply for autonomy because she likes it and she likes the extra money and quite often thinks of that money, very often thinks of that money as hers, which is a whole nother piece. We can come back to that. Um, so, but she's not doing it for the same reasons and she's not handling it in the same way that the man does. And she's not attached to that naturally the way men are. She's been, if there's any social expectations going on, it's, it's the it, it's that it's that we are trying to create women to be like men so that they are attaching their identity to their income they're trying it on for size it's not working they're miserable they're stressed out they're taxed 
this is especially when you throw children into the equation. Um, but not always, like in the case with, with this singer, um, I don't think they have children or she doesn't have children, but her, the life that she's living is 24 seven. It's, there, there is nothing else except that life. When you, when you reach those heights, there's no, there is no room for a relationship. That's the reality, but nobody wants to talk about that. So whether you're talking about a baby, um, taking over your time and your energies or your job, um, or, or sorry, your career, that's all consuming in this way that really the effect is the same. The relationship takes a back seat, but there's no acknowledgement of that as being the, the core problem. So they bring up this other woman named Letitia, Latasha James, a 30-year-old living in Michigan, who is married, but she writes that in a lot of her past relationships, um, you know, it didn't work out because these men were initially attracted to her. Uh, and then, then as they start to peel back the layers and realize how much hard work it is, how much time away from them it requires, it starts to eat away at them. Or, you know, they just realize that who the hell wants to be in a relationship with someone for whom work is their entire life and there's no space for the relationship itself. Is it reasonable for a man or a woman, for that matter, to, to, to want to prioritize the relationship over their work? This particular woman said when she met her now husband six years ago, she was honest about her priorities. A relationship was nice, she said, but her main focus was growing her business and reaching her goals. Let me say that again, because that's so important. When she met her now husband six years ago, she was honest about her priorities. A relationship was nice, she said, but her main focus was growing her business and reaching her goals. Now, if she was that clear at that stage of the game and he chose to marry her anyway, that's on him. He should not have married her. And so with this particular couple, the only way that would work is if the person on the receiving that information is also on that same page. If he too, or if it were reversed, if she too, if they both had as their main focus, their business and they didn't prioritize the relationship. Now, I would argue that it was still going to fall apart eventually, but at least they're honest and on the same page about it. Have at it. But the fact that you hitched your train to somebody who specifically said, hey, you're not my priority, that's on you. So they are still married, but I'm just pointing out that most people, when hearing that in the dating game, are not going to marry someone who flat out tells them that the relationship isn't going to be the priority, or at least they shouldn't. And then a third person here, a third woman, Brianne Dodge, a 22-year-old. So she's not married. She's a lot younger, but she can still relate to Musgrave's lyrics because she hopes to build a career within the National Park Service and eventually work her way up to become a superintendent of a park. Um, and when she was, she's having the same problems when she was date. I mean, she is dating. So she's having the same problems that the other woman was explaining that men, you know, don't know what to do with that. And then it says, an experience that has stuck with her was one she had with a server she was dating. So she's dating she's dating a waiter, basically. And she's complaining about the way he responds to her plans, to her career plans. Well, what are you doing dating someone who's clearly on a different path? I mean, basically, it's like you're going into the wrong space, having the wrong approach to it, and then complaining about the outcome which makes no sense. Um, Alexandra Killewald, author of Money, Work, and Marital Stability, argues that lack of financial motivation is the reason men's roles have not sustainably changed in the household. Financial motivation is the reason men's roles have not... I'm uh, sorry, sorry. Lack of financial motivation is the reason men's roles have not substantially changed in the household. Now, I would agree with that because what we basically did was we we overturned the whole damn thing and said, basically, Hey guys, we don't need your money. We don't need to be provided for. We're going to provide for ourselves. So she's right that there is a lack of financial motivation because as long as the woman is earning a man's incentive and desire and motivation to become the earner is going to fall away. And, and this is really where women get confused. They don't understand this. They think that why can't they both, just equally put forth the same effort. 
But the reason why they don't understand it is because nobody will tell them how men work, how they think, how heterosexual relationships and marriage is designed to work. Because men are service oriented when they get married and they want to provide and protect for the family. If you're doing it, it's not that he's threatened per se, or that he's insecure so much as that it it deflates their desire to push forward and be that hero for you because you are doing it. And you have the, and women have the idea that they're going to want to do it anyway, because you know, we're just partners, partners, partners doing the same thing. It doesn't work that way. When you're married, there are roles and you don't have to stick to them. In, this isn't an argument for sticking to some sort of strict gender roles. It's just understanding that what motivates most women and what motivates most men is different. So the more you move with that, the, the smoother your relationship is going to be. Uh, women, of course, had so many motivations. This is the same author, Alexandra Kilowog, to, to interview, to increase their employment. So that gave us an incentive to change the female homemaker norm, but there isn't sort of the same incentive to change the male breadwinner norm. And once agree, once again, I would agree with her on that as well. There's never going to be an incentive to change the male breadwinner, male breadwinner norm, because no matter how high women climb, They are always going to want a man who's at the same level or higher. So the breadwinner norm can't change while the female, while the female, as she wrote, homemaker norm can and has and and does. It's just, it's, they're not the same. So the takeaway from all this is that Of course, this Casey Musgraves breadwinner song resonates for women today because so many of them are out earning their partners. I work with them. I see what a disaster it is. There are um, countless um, manifestations of this dynamic that cause the relationship to break down. And at the core of it is that your man that a man, I should say, is no is is displaced. He's no longer allowed to be the provider and the protector. And when and 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 the irony is that not only does he want that role, so do women. So do most women. They're they're providing and protecting for themselves, but then they get married and they continue to do that and they don't understand why they're not happy. And it's because they don't want they don't want to do that when they are married. They really don't even really want to do it, I don't think, in the relationship, but they, they're doing it because before you get married and have kids, what are you going to do? Of course, you're going to be working. So it's not really obvious until you get married, which is why you have so many divorces. Interestingly enough, there was a 60 Minutes Australia segment that I just wrote about and put up on my site. You can go to SuzanneBanker.com on the bottom where the blog is, and it's the first one down there, um, that asked what it is that women really want. And it, it, you're going to want to read it because it goes hand in hand with what we're talking about right now. It's basically um, that women are not juggling this new world at all on their own and they're burning out and they're, I mean, it's not really new. We've known this for a while, but it was nice to see a whole segment on this on 60 Minutes and then addressing the fact that there is another way to do things, which is pointing out from the get-go when you're dating to the man if you're somebody who wants to have a calm, peaceful life that's more in keeping with tradition, that you let the guy know when you're dating that those are your plans. Um, and they highlight this woman who did that. And I, that's certainly what I did when I think I've talked about that in the past. When I met my husband, I was you know, very, very early on. First couple of dates was very obvious where I was going with my life and what my plans were about being home with my kids and not outsourcing that work. And he heard that and was all on board as well. Look, get that stuff out of the way, you know, just get it out of the way at the beginning and you can't really go wrong. You just can't because you're, you're figuring out whether or not the person is on the same side as you and same team going to the same place. And so the idea that 
you know, there are no men who are willing to be breadwinners or what have you, I would take issue with because I think most men would absolutely jump to the, um, absolutely jump to the, with the opportunity that they are being given to be that hero and to be that breadwinner. But you have to get that clear that you're willing to, to, you know, not compete with that. And I think you'll find, well, I don't think, I know you'll find more men jumping into that, um, that role because right now we do have a generation of lost men for this exact reason, because women are taking care of themselves and say they don't need them and men are lost. And if you move aside and let them shine in the way they're meant to shine, um, they will start coming out of the woodwork right now. They're just, they're not, they've been displaced. So anyway, breadwinner, Casey Musgrave, M U S G R A V E S. Um, I don't know the name of the album, but anyway, the song is Breadwinner. Check it out. And that's all I have to say about that. And that ends this hour of the Suzanne Venker Show. Don't forget to go to SuzanneVenker.com slash podcast and click on Become a Patreon subscriber, where you get early access to the shows as well as other perks. This is what allows me to continue to bring you quality content commercial free. That is my number one goal because you know what? Commercials suck. Thanks for listening, everyone. Have a great week.